Before I begin my presentation, I'd like to ask uh, two questions. How many people here have ever had an imaginary friend? How many people still have their imaginary friend? You're all crazy. You may not be I'm going to tell you a story about a boy named Bobby. When Bobby was four years old, he met his imaginary friend, Stephen. His parents thought that this was normal. It was. Most children his age usually have an imaginary friend. What his parents thought was not normal, however, is that he still had his imaginary friend by the time he was 27 years old. His parents did some research, and they came to the conclusion that he probably had some sort of mental illness. What mental illness? Schizophrenia. Hi, my name is Gabriel Guadalupe, and my disorder is schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a mental disorder that changes the way people sense the world around you. Notice that I say sense and not see. This is because the people that develop schizophrenia perceive the world around them using more senses than just their sight. Today, I am going to talk to you about the history, suspected causes, treatments, and symptoms of schizophrenia. I'll also discuss an experiment that was conducted to test whether or not auditory hallucinations could literally be drowned out by other noises. History. Wow, I'm sorry. <laughs> History. Before schizophrenia, there was only psychosis. Then along came Emil Kraepelin, a German psychiatrist. He deduced that psychosis was really two disorders. Dementia praecox and manic depression. Dementia praecox is really only premature dementia. And manic depression is a bipolar disorder. Craigland thought that dementia praecox was caused by a toxin in the brain that rendered your cognitive functions inoperable. He was wrong. This was proved by Eugene Bleuler, a Swiss psychiatrist in 1911. He revised Craigland's idea and named dementia praecox schizophrenia. Even though Craigland was wrong, he still contributed to psych psychological advances by differentiating psychosis into two separate entities. Causes. Scientists, the science and psychological communities don't fully understand what causes schizophrenia because they're still trying to figure out what exactly the brain is. They do, however, know a couple of things that attribute to schizophrenia. For example, they know that schizophrenia runs in families. You are most likely to develop schizophrenia if you have a twin sibling that develops it. You are moderately likely to develop schizophrenia if a first degree relative develops it. First degree relatives include parents and siblings. You are least most likely to develop schizophrenia if a second degree relative develops this disorder. Second degree relatives are aunts, uncles, cousins, and grandparents. You are likely to develop schizophrenia more than the general population if you have a twin sibling that develops it or a first or second degree relative that develops it just because you're related to them. And you may have a gene that has that is schizophrenia. That causes schizophrenia. I apologize. Scientists also know that schizophrenia can be caused by different brain structure and chemistry. <coughs> Two neurotransmitters in the brain are dopamine and glutamate. Neurotransmitters are cells or chemicals in the brain that help your brain cells communicate with each other. If these are imbalanced, then your brain doesn't communicate with itself properly and it doesn't work right. Another thing that can be attributed to schizophrenia are, is your brain structure. Schizophrenia patients have been noted to have larger ventricles in their brain. Ventricles are cavity, cavities in the brain filled with cerebrospinal fluid. It's also been noted that before birth, people who develop schizophrenia have strange cell displacement. So this can lead to disable, disabilities and other disorders that coincide with schizophrenia that don't surface in puberty. Symptoms. There are three different kinds of symptoms that schizophrenia patients suffer from. 
positive, negative, and cognitive. Positive symptoms are the easiest to differentiate because you don't usually see them in normal people. These include hallucinations, delusions, thought disorders, and movement disorders. Next up, Next up are negative symptoms. Negative symptoms are harder to differentiate because they can be mistaken for normal emotion. This includes boring, monotonous speech, lack of daily pleasure doing things you would do on a normal basis, and reserved communication skills, especially when forced to interact with other people. <coughs> Cognitive symptoms are also hard to differentiate because they can be mistaken for other disorders. These include trouble understanding and using information and attention span problems. My experiment. This experiment was conducted to test whether or not you could drown out auditory hallucinations using other sounds. This was conducted using 32 people. 11 had developed schizophrenia. 11 had not, and 8 had a panic disorder. This used auditory masking, which is basically when a sound is played loud enough or distracting enough to distract from another sound. It had simultaneous forward and backward masking. Simultaneous masking, as its name suggests, is when the masking sound is playing, played at the same time as the target tone. The target tone was a simulation of an auditory hallucination. They used voices that some schizophrenia patients hear because they don't know how to induce acoustic hallucinations. Forward masking is when the masking sound was played after the target tone. And backward masking is when the sample, or the, I'm sorry, the masking sound, it was played after the target tone. During, scientists concluded that during simultaneous masking, it depends entirely on the subject's ability to differentiate noises. During forward masking, schizophrenia patients heard the target, to, heard the target tone louder than other, patient, other subjects. And during backward masking, schizophrenia patients heard the target tone lower. What all this means is that during forward masking, schizophrenia patients heard the target tone first and they didn't really hear anything else. And during backwards masking, they heard the masking sound first and nothing else. Treatments. There is no cure for schizophrenia, but there are treatments. These mostly include antipsychotic medications. There are two types, first generation antipsychotic medications and second generation antipsychotic medications. First generation antipsychotic medications were developed in the 1950s and are known as typical antipsychotics. Second generation antipsychotic medications were developed in the 1990s and they are known as atypical antipsychotics. Some examples of first generation antipsychotic medications include chlorpromazine, aloperidol, perfenazine, and fluphenazine. Examples of second generation antipsychotic medications include olanzapine, olanzapine, quetiapine, zepracidone, and aripiprazole. There is also the best antipsychotic medication available on the market is called clopazine. This goes above and beyond every other antipsychotic medication by doing what they do, but better. The only problem about, with this medication is that it causes a granulocytosis, which is the decrease in white blood cells, which is bad because you need your white blood cells to fight infection. The side effects of these treatments include drowsiness, dizziness and moving, abnormally rapid heartbeats, photophobia, and skin rashes. These are not permanent, and they only last a few days while you take the medication. In conclusion, today I talked to you about schizophrenia. I discussed the history, some suspected causes, symptoms, and treatments. I also discussed an experiment on whether or not sounds can be drowned out. I'd like
like to finish that story with Bobby. When Bobby found out he had schizophrenia, he wasn't really too devastated, but his family pressured him into taking antipsychotic medication. They made him take clopazine, the best one on the market, but they cared so dearly for him that when his white blood cell count got low, they wouldn't let him leave the house. So he was depressed because he couldn't go outside. So he stopped taking the medication, and his imaginary friend Stephen came back, and he started talking to him. Everyone thought he was talking to himself. So he got so depressed because everyone was telling him, stop talking to yourself, stop talking to yourself. He hung himself. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> Thank you. Jazz hands. Yeah. Oh, 